I'm with S over telling my dad's girlfriend the truth about why I have limited contact with them. I had a good childhood in terms of food to eat and nice clothes, education, etc. I didn't have a loving environment though. My dad screamed at my mom all the time and called our names and compared us to other kids. And of course, he was always right and we could never be wrong. He did a lot of charity and helped other people so my mom would always say what a good guy he is and that we need to be grateful. A few years ago, there's a situation. I finally made my mom take off her rose-colored glasses and file for a divorce. I have limited contact with him now. He has a new girlfriend he's been with for about a year and she's nice, I just don't want to have much to do with him. Not that long ago, his girlfriend asked me to meet up and have coffee. I said okay and we had lunch a few days ago. She asked me why I was so distant and if she did something wrong. I said it had nothing to do with her. I told her about my childhood. She was shocked. Dad called me about it. Very upset. Your sister doesn't agree with what I did. Is it wrong for my husband to demand sexy time even though I don't want to? Disclaimer is not my story time instead of me on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for six months. Unfortunately, our marriage was arranged by our families. And so far, I have not been able to fall in love with him. I come from a very strict religion. My family and my husband's family believe that I should obey him. And it's been really hard for me to adjust to this. Before getting married, I had more freedom. But now I'm mostly home all day waiting for my husband to come home. I cook all of his meals and serve him while he's eating. And even if I'm not eating, he expects me to be sitting there with him. My husband is a very rich man so he lets me go shopping whenever I want but that's something I can't even do by myself he always sends someone with me to go shopping so I take advantage and buy really expensive designer things sometimes I spend five thousand dollars on a shopping day this really never seems to bother him another thing I don't really like is that he rarely ever speaks to me we have small talk every now and then but we don't talk about important things especially before we got married we'd only seen each other a few times I thought we'd have a really good relationship and be friends, but no. Sometimes I'll ask him what his day was like, and he just says it was fine. Other times I try to talk to him about his job, but he never really gives me a full answer. So honestly, I don't even know what he does. But my biggest problem with him is something else. He demands, you know what, sexy time. And I never really want to. I'm not in love with him, and I'm not really attracted to him. On our wedding night, my family really pressured me into doing it. And it was horrible. And now whenever he wants it, I defend myself and it turns into a big fight. He even called my parents to complain. Part two is, is it wrong that my husband demands sexy time even though I don't want to? Disclaimers is not my story time and send me on Instagram. That's when he called my parents and complained to them that I wouldn't do it with him. He took me to my parents' house the following day. My dad was really angry with me and told me that I needed to obey my husband. I told him I never wanted to get married to begin with and that I didn't love him or was even attracted to him. My parents clearly didn't understand me. I went home and my husband basically coerced me into doing it. And it's not even like it's fun. He doesn't do anything to please me. It's all about him when we're doing it. One night he asked me to do it and I refused. He got so angry he told me that he didn't need to ask for my permission. I basically punched him in the face and since then he hasn't touched me. But then I felt so responsible and I actually apologized even though I was just defending myself. Everything's back to wasn't in love with my husband. He also told me that I should divorce my husband, but then he told me why. He said that since college, he's always had feelings for me. That means he's had feelings for me for three years. Well, long story short, he's my lover now, and nobody knows, only my best friend. We see each other three times a week. I always go when my husband's at work, and I tell him that I'm gonna be with my best friend, and Rob and I meet at his place, and I'm the happiest I've ever been. I know that this is totally wrong, but I'm finally living. Of course, my husband still demands you know what, but I'm able to bear it now because I know I have someone else who actually loves me. I know this can't last forever though. I wish I could just fall in love with my husband, but it's not that easy. He's always so demanding and he doesn't understand that his behavior is not normal. And I barely speak to my parents now. I've only been seeing Rob for a month, but he's got to go back home eventually. What should I do? Am I the asshole for embarrassing my daughter for her own sake? No. <laughs> Embarrass that lady. Embarrassing people? Good yeah. thing. Me having a podcast? Bad thing. <laughs> Sorry, I continue. Yeah. Um, my 40 female daughter, Dana, 17 female, has a stutter. Let's just so, all sit. Let's, yeah, let's, let's just all sit yeah, here. Let's sit on that we, just for a second. Do you know where this is going, maybe? It would be fucking wild if that wasn't pertinent information. <laughs> And a post Just random. Made, and a post to make this person look good. <laughs> yeah, and also she's a birthday clown. Like what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like for no reason. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's. Okay. I wonder where this is going. I'm. My 40 female daughter Dana, 17 female, has a stutter. Sometimes it is even hard to understand what she's trying to say. The, okay. Really trigger trigger warning ableism. Actually. Yeah. This is. This is it's yeah, pretty bad. Yeah. Trigger warning ableism. Yeah. This is already getting off the rails. Sometimes it's even hard to understand what she's trying to say and connect her words. You fucking piece of shit. Yeah. She, already. Yeah. She used to speak a lot when she was younger and did not care about it. 
Um, but then she started talking less, and now she avoids talking. I wonder why. I wonder who's doing this. I wonder, yeah, what influenced it her? It can't be this person, again, writing a Reddit post to make themselves look good. Or the good. world at large as well. The world could also be shitty. No, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm willing to bet the world's sh- shitty, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't definitely have, like, a, a stutter that's super bad, but I do stutter sometimes. I had a stutter when I was a kid. Yeah. And okay. sometimes it comes up, yeah. No, I feel it, yeah, so. I found out that sometimes when she goes out alone, she pretends to be mute and uses her phone to communicate if she needs to. One day we went to have dinner, my husband, 40 male, and I, and our four kids, 16 female, 14 male, and 10 male. Usually when the waiter comes, we all say our orders individually. This time, Dana said that she didn't know what she wanted to order so we could choose for her. I knew this was a way of her avoiding speaking. Just really, gear, just gear yourself up, man. Yeah, I... I God, I'm I'm huh. so uncomfortable right now. The waiter came and we set our orders, but instead of ordering for her, I said, "Dana, it's your turn." She was confused for a second and didn't say anything. I continued to say, "Just choose anything." She tried to order, but the words were hard and the waiter couldn't understand, so he handed uh. her the paper and pen to rewrite. I asked him to wait for her to finish. Fucking stop. Come on. It took a while, and the other kids started to complain, so my husband asked her to point point to it, and he ordered it. I was upset that he did. We agreed to put her on the spot and make her talk and not be embarrassed anymore or rely on us to do all the talking for her. It was awkward. That's the bad part. Yeah, actually, God. Yeah, can't. Dana did that. Yeah, Dana, for sure. It's everyone else's fault but mine. Yeah, yeah. you didn't fucking do that. God. Fucking, oh. God, yeah, there's a lot of words that I want to say that I know I can't say. Dana's mood seemed to change, and it became awkward. Not allowed to have emotions. Yeah, how cool. dare you? Yeah. After I did something. Yeah. God. To her. Um, when we returned, my husband explained that it was going to take forever and it wasn't the right setting. Afterward, Dana came and said to please not do that again. I explained our reasoning, but she was upset. Were we wrong? Yes. Yeah, dog. That is the most fucked up shit. You, You're man. a piece of shit, man. Am I the asshole for telling my roommate that her pregnancy is not my problem? Well, it would be nice to be considerate. At the end of the day, they're not your responsibility. So the girl that I live with, Kay, is pregnant and due earlier next year. Of course, she seems excited to have a baby, but at the same time, she has been making her pregnancy my problem. I get that pregnancy is going to affect her physically in many ways, but Kay has been a pain in the ass to deal with. I had to throw out all the bananas because she was complaining about how strong the smell was. She isn't helping with cooking, cleaning as much as she used to, and Kay cried about almost everything and it's annoying as hell. Her pregnancy is making her vomit, which I expected, but sometimes the vomiting is so intense and once she pretty much projectile vomited on the floor because she couldn't make it to the bathroom, for which I had to clean up her vomit. Over the past few months, she has been asking me to get things for her from the store, even on good days when she isn't feeling sick. When I asked her why she couldn't just get up and go to the store herself, she said that I'm not the pregnant one. So this is where I might be the asshole. Kay has been asking me to drive her to appointments, which I did once, but then it became a constant thing of her asking asking me and I kept refusing. This is what happened the other day. She asked me to take her to the clinic. I said no. I was busy that day. She kept pleading with me and finally I had enough and kind of snapped. I told her that she is the only one responsible for her pregnancy and to not make it my problem so that she needs to stop making it by asking me to constantly do favors for her. She started crying and I left because I couldn't take it anymore. I know I may have been too harsh to a pregnant lady, but I don't feel like I need to be her personal servant. So am I the asshole? I say no. I still say no. And for everyone in the comments right now, begging me to read the next part. Oh, God. <laughs> a commenter, Godless Goddess 1968 asks, is it your child? To which OP responds, yes. God, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. It changes asshole. everything. Come on, man. That changes every fucking thing. Holy. Am I the asshole for calling my brother an insecure, testicle-grabbing, chauvinistic man-baby over his comments about my wife's makeup? No. <laughs> okay so that's the actual quote i'm still pissed as hell but maybe i went too far here my brother and i are both late 30s we get along fine most of the time but my brother doesn't do well in a lot of social situations he says things that are inappropriate and gets overly opinionated yells a lot etc he just doesn't seem to understand tact or when to let things go in casual conversation 
Our wives are best friends. They talk almost every day on FaceTime. My wife is an ex-model slash actress locally and very good with makeup. She's in her mid-30s and we have three kids and she doesn't wear much makeup anymore. But she got some as a gift for Christmas and decided she wanted to get more. Apparently she's been buying some cheap stuff and she wanted to splurge on some good shit. Anyway, she's been testing it all out over the last month, buying more here and there and doing some crazy eyeshadow things. Honestly, I don't know what I'm talking about, but she looks great all the time. She's gorgeous <laughs> without makeup. She's really talented with it, though, and she's having a lot of fun. I tease her a little since she works from home and she's wearing pajama pants, but her makeup looks like she's at a nightclub. I think it's cute and funny. My brother thinks she's doing it because she's cheating or she wants to cheat. He called me this morning to say that he's concerned because he's seen her on FaceTime and he decided she must be posting pictures or sending pics to some dude or multiple dudes. I tried to blow it off and explain that it wasn't that way, but he got more aggressive about it, so I ended up yelling at him and shouting the insecure testicle man baby thing. He's being ridiculous and needs to mind his own business, but I think I might be the asshole for blowing up at him and name calling when he's probably well intentioned. I want to add too, mom and brother both asked, maybe other people will. No, I haven't asked my wife why she's recently started wearing more makeup, and I'm not going to because I think it's rude. She's spending her money on stuff for her face, and it's a creative hobby. I'm not going to be a dick that ruins somebody's creative outlet by asking them to justify it or by insinuating there's a sinister motive behind it. It makes her happy, so I assume that's why she's doing it. Asking why is dumb and insulting in my opinion. Am I the asshole? My best friend always projects her insecurities onto me. Should I break up with her? My best friend and I have known each other for exactly two years. We met in college and hit it off right away. We're both Latinas and we come from really big families. I have two other sisters and we get along really well. We always hype each other up and have each other's backs. A few months after I started my friendship with my best friend, let's call her Lucia. Lucia started showing some really toxic qualities. Sometimes I think I'm just reading too much into it or overreacting. So you let me know. First of all, she would start talking bad about my sisters in front of me. She would make comments like, wow, your sister's gained weight or wow your sister has cellulite when she first did this i would just defend my sisters but then i realized that that just made her want to keep talking more trash so if she ever said anything about my sisters i wouldn't say anything at the time our friendship started i had a really big crush on this guy he and i went to the same gym and i never had the courage to speak to him not until my sister convinced me to i finally spoke to him at the gym and we actually hit it off we would work out together every now and then and he finally asked me out on a date the day of our date my best friend came over to my house and while i was getting ready she started saying really weird things at first she told me that i should should wash my hair because it looked oily. I told her my hair was freshly washed. When I looked at myself in the mirror, I could see her reflection and she just rolled her eyes at me. This is when things started clicking. Part two is up. My best friend projects her insecurities on me. Should I break up with her? I could see through the mirror that she had rolled her eyes at me. Then she started making other comments about my appearance. Mind you, I'm getting ready for a date. When I showed her the outfit that I was going to wear, she said it was too revealing and that I would probably scare him off. It wasn't even revealing. It just showed my legs. It was a cute sundress with a cardigan on top. I told her I thought I looked cute. And then she said, Aya tu amiga. As I'm finishing up my hair and my makeup, she says, Wow, you're going to wear that much makeup? But the way she said it was so aggressive, I actually took off the lipstick I was wearing. Instead, I just put on lip balm. I looked at her and she had a smile on her face. It was like she was happy she finally got to me. The date went really well and he actually turned into my boyfriend a few weeks later. And guess what? My best friend started judging everything about him. The first time she met him, she started saying, wow, I think he's balding, which he isn't. And even if he was, I wouldn't care. She also started making comments about him staring at other girls, something I never even noticed that he did. And I would know I'm with him all the time. It's like she was trying to plant all these insecurities in my head. One day, Lucia and my boyfriend and I are in his car. We were heading to the movie theaters when Lucia says, wow, you put on way too much perfume. It's giving me a headache. That's what my boyfriend told her that if it bothered her that much, she should just go home. And out of nowhere, Lucia swung her fist at him. She actually tried to attack him. Part three is up. My best friend always projects her insecurities on me. Should I break up with her? That's when she started swinging at my boyfriend. Luckily, I yelled at her and she stopped. It's like she was upset at me for yelling at her for trying to hit my boyfriend. That's when my boyfriend kicked her out of the car and I asked him to calm down. I got out of the car with Lucia and asked her to calm down. That's when she told me that I needed to break up with him and that he was clearly abusive. I told her he was just defending me. Then she said, he doesn't need to defend you. I'm only saying this because I care about you. Then she called herself an Uber and left. My boyfriend and I went to the movie theaters and we had a really nice night. Here's some more examples of her projecting on me. While we were getting ready for a friend's birthday party, she started pointing out some stuff on my body. She said, your elbows are really dark. You need to fix that. Another time I decided to get some highlights and she said they looked horrible on me. She said I looked like a JLo wannabe. Luckily, I didn't care and I just kept the highlights. Mind you, two months later, she got the exact same highlights. Now, I know that she cares about me because she does have my back. She'll help me with anything I need, honestly. And I wonder if I'm overreacting, but I don't think so. I just don't know how to tell her that she's toxic and she makes me feel bad.
What should I do? I'm with Asla for leaving my date at a bar. I went on a date with this girl Sunday and let's call her Maddie. I've met Maddie several times through my friend's girlfriend, Sarah. Maddie was always super nice and fun to talk to, so I asked her to hang out Sunday and I knew that she liked football and I asked her to come watch the game and we met at a sports bar for dinner. I pick her up Sunday, we get to the bar and Maddie said that her friend was there sitting at a table with some other people so she wants to say hi. Then she asked if it was cool if we went by and sat by them. I didn't really want to, but I agreed. We went over and she introduced me, but basically from that, I felt like a third wheel. Tried to talk about football with them, but they didn't watch sports. But I sat there and watched the game while Maddie talked to her friends. Time passed and the game was almost over and I told Maddie I was gonna head out. Then they started ordering drinks and I didn't have any because I was driving. So I finished my soda and told Maddie that I was leaving. She got confused. Then I had to wait for her to finish her drink since I was gonna take her home. Then she started screwing around with her friends again. And I said, I'm leaving. She didn't say anything, so I just left. My friends then called me later saying how I stranded. This one comes from the Am I the Asshole subreddit and is titled, Am I the Asconaut for Confronting My Best Friend's Fiance About Not Being Involved in Wedding Preparation? Best Friend's Fiance. I, 30 female, have been best friends with Aiden, 30 male, since high school. When I say friends, I mean it. I contemplated him as a dating prospect for a bit in college, but figured it wouldn't go anywhere, so I never pursued it. I can't say if he ever had the same feelings, we've never discussed it. Aiden's been dating Jessica, 30 female, for about three years. I'm happy for them, but I must admit, Jessica and I never truly warmed up to each other. She wasn't the girl I pictured Aiden to end up with. She comes from a wealthy family and is always put together. Aiden is middle class and very outdoorsy. I do feel at times Aiden prioritized their relationship over his other friendships, but I can understand why at times. However, things have started to change a bit for the worse. Aiden and I would always discuss how we wanted to be involved in each other's weddings, planning included. Aiden is going to have me be a groom woman, which I'm assuming Jessica is fine with. We've been chatting about bachelor parties, and he's come with what I consider to be a strict list. I'm assuming it's Jessica's doing. What has really irked me is that Jessica isn't letting me be involved in wedding dress shopping. I asked Aiden to suggest my being involved since I'm someone who knows him best. I want her to look fantastic for him that day, and I know Aiden would prefer some styles to others. Jessica reached out to me, and while she appreciated my offer to come, she said she was keeping it small and really only wanted her mom, her grandmother, and her maid of honor there with her. I texted her that I understand, but I felt that it was important enough to be there as well because I can give her an idea of what Aiden would want. She responded to me that she and Aiden had discussed things, and while he has preferences, he also said that she would look great in anything. This is one of the biggest choices for her to make. I called her selfish and said that it seems to me that the only one making choices in the relationship was her. That she didn't seem to care about Aiden's feelings. She didn't respond to me after that, but I got a call from Aiden asking what the hell had gotten into me. I told him what happened and he told me that it was unacceptable what I had done and he needed a few days to cool down and process. He told me not to call or text him at all and be prepared that I may be uninvited from the wedding because this is his first instinct. I'm devastated and I'm not sure what is going on. My friends, who are also Aiden's friends, think I wasn't out of line, but others think I was. Uh, you were out of line. You were out of line completely. Completely. Even if in my mind I switch roles here and say that that you were uh, a male bestie of the bride who wanted to be involved with like tuxedo shopping. No, no. And the 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 angle here of saying that I should be there because I can tell you what he's gonna want is insulting to the bride. Also, I, like, the bride gets to choose the dress. I don't know how much a bride considers, like, what, what, what the groom is going to want when choosing the dress. I, how much is that a consideration? Also, like, she seems confused. She seems confused that, uh, that Jessica didn't immediately take to her and that they didn't end up being besties. And, and I can imagine, you know, Jessica coming into this situation and being like, oh, you have a girl bestie. That's cool. Um, like, it's weird. I'm not going to be besties with her because even though you guys are friends and you've never pursued anything beyond that, it's just weird and I'm uncomfortable with it. So she was, the distance was discomfort. Distance was caused by discomfort and it was made worse with you asserting that you knew better than she knew what he was going to want. Yeah, I think you just got yourself kicked out of this wedding. And then to call her selfish and say that, that she's the only one making the decision. She's the freaking bride. Dude. She gets to do that. She gets to choose her own.
dress without you being there saying, uh, Aiden's not gonna like, try this one. This is not a good idea. Why, how did that seem like a good idea at all? You know, she could say that she never had feelings for him, but the way that she's acting right now seems like it's got at least a dose of jealousy to it. It's got a dollop. It's got a dollop of jealousy to it. And the fact that she's she's projecting herself to know him better because they've been friends longer is and the confusion about him prioritizing his relationship over over his friends sometimes like she gets butthurt about almost everything that happens with Aiden and Jessica. OP. Uh, title of this one was Am I the astronaut for confronting my best friend's fiance about not being involved in wedding preparations? Well, we have to put OP. On the ask on scale here because Opie is definitely an asshole. We have to do it. This was out of line. It was out of line. You don't get to do this kind of shit and you put your foot in your mouth. The the question was, am I the astronaut for confronting my best friend's fiance about not being involved in wedding preparation? Yeah, there's nothing written anywhere that says that she has to. It's her wedding. It's their wedding but it's her wedding. She is the bride. She has ultimate control of the wedding. Every groom knows this, and I'm, I'm making an assumption here, but 99.9% .9 of them are okay with that. So, what is she? For she definitely could have done it differently, definitely should have done it differently, definitely shouldn't have done that. Is she evil? I don't think she's evil. I do think she's, she's oblivious or in denial. This could be a denial thing. She could be like, I don't have feelings for him. I don't have feelings for him. And then five years from now, she's going to be like, shit, you know what? I had feelings for him. She definitely should not have done that. I don't think that she's evil. She definitely overstepped her boundaries. She didn't know her role. She didn't stay in her lane. She's swerving all over the place here, trying to trying to drive in two lanes at once. Ill-advised. And now your friendship is at risk. And I think if you put yourself in, in a, a neutral kind of third party role here, you'd be able to see that what you were doing sent all the wrong messages to both your bestie and his bride to be. And the friends who say that you're not the asshole here, <laughs> my friends who are also Aiden's friends think I wasn't out of line. That's because they've bought into the lie. They bought into the lie over the years that you don't have feelings, but your actions say otherwise. You can't do the I know him better act. You can't, you can't. And it wouldn't matter if you were a dude, it wouldn't. You don't get to impose on their forever partner that you know better. It's not a good look. Yeah, I think I think the friendship is over because it would jeopardize his marriage now. She's definitely not going to the wedding. And I think she, I think she just destroyed her, her ability to have a relationship with her bestie by letting her, her, Romantic feelings destroyed. I'm an asshole for not letting my sister-in-law into my fully child-free party. So basically, my wife... So basically, I had a party for my wife, and it was a massive party with no kids because there was going to be alcohol, and it was all day from 8 p.m. to 9 a.m. the next day. Anyways, we emailed everyone saying no kids, but my sister-in-law didn't listen and brought them anyways. We told her they couldn't come as, as one of them was literally just a baby, and the others really badly behaved. She said that we said the same thing at our wedding, but did let some kids in. So basically she thought that it could slide and didn't think it was a full no kids allowed. We told her and her husband to get out, but she kept saying, what about the kids? They've been dying to come. And I told her I emailed her about no kids and she asked what she should do. And I said, one of you guys can bring them home and find a sitter. But she said that she couldn't. I suggested some other things as well. Eventually she left. But was saying that like I hate her and I don't let her into places, but I normally would if it wasn't a big event. Anyways, am I the asshole? I'm starting to feel like one because we've had so many child-free things. My 23 female boyfriend, 23 males, mother, 56 female, keeps putting an ingredient I'm allergic to in her dishes. This has been somewhat of a nightmare, so any advice would be amazing. My boyfriend is also 23 for clarity. I have a garlic allergy. It's not lethal, and I definitely wouldn't get anaphylaxis or something like that. The problem is that I get asthma if I eat it, and it'll really mess with my digestion later. Everyone in my life knows that I cannot eat garlic, and I won't eat garlic. It makes eating out a nightmare because of how prevalent it is. So usually my boyfriend and I have date nights at our apartment and we cook for each other. But my boyfriend's mom has a family tradition and she insists that we all come to dinner at least once a month. She's a fantastic cook and usually a really nice lady to be around. But there's one problem. She wants me to come every time, but she always adds garlic to every dish. 
At this point, I've just started taking an inhaler and just eating the Hawaiian roll <laughs> Shoei serves. My boyfriend drives us and we just go get fast food right after. We've talked to her over and over again about the garlic. I've asked her over and over to please not use garlic. And she just says she doesn't understand how it's such a big deal because it's not like you'll die. I tried skipping the meals, but she just throws a fit and drags her entire family into it. I've been with my boyfriend for three years now, and I'm best friends with his sister. I'm at my wit's end. How do I get this through to her? My sister's stupidity destroyed my family. My sister let her boyfriend drive my parents' car. She took it when they were out. She only had a learner's permit, so she was supposed to have a licensed adult with her. She let her boyfriend, who was a year too young to have a learner's permit, drive, and he crashed. He died. My sister was seriously injured. They think one or both of her feet were on the dashboard. She is paralyzed from the chin down. My parents' insurance isn't covering them since my sister took the car illegally, and her boyfriend's family are suing my parents. My parents tried to sue them back since he was driving, but it was thrown out when they tried. We had to move into an apartment because my parents couldn't afford our house. I see them cry every day. I heard my mom say that going bankrupt doesn't get rid of the lawsuit debt, and their lawyers told them to try and settle before it goes to court because they will probably lose. My sister has to be in a home forever because she needs help and care 24-7, 365 days a year. She remembers everything, and her brain is not affected at all. Her medical bills and nursing home bills are so so much money. My grandparents are all trying to help, but they are all in retirement homes and don't have much. I've seen them cry too. I know she is getting punished already because she's paralyzed almost completely, but I still can't even look at her because she destroyed our entire family. I think when you have a bad choice, which seems rather simple and probably at that age seems pretty harmless when you make that decision, it's just like, oh, everyone drives. Like It's not going to be a big deal. You don't have the mental capacity to understand the dangers of that and the riskiness yeah. of having someone who's maybe never driven drive the car. So we all understand it's a terrible decision. She now has to live with that consequence the rest of her life. Yeah. A physical consequence. A physical, but also an emotional health. and a mental. She, yeah. Her so boyfriend she's, died. She's going to go through it forever. The other thing that then adds to that is now it affects other people very greatly. There's a yeah. family that literally lost their son and then her parents are now going through. They lost their home. I mean, it's not their gonna, whole life. Yes, it's, they innocently lost a lot. They aren't paralyzed. They'll, you know, they'll be able to figure things out over time. And I don't know if they'll heal from it, but I think monetarily they could, you know, it's a big setback, but I'm sure like over time you can recover from something like that. Yeah. It's just crazy because just because of how it went down, there's no insurance. There's now all these crazy lawsuits because I'm sure on some level they, should have been responsible for the car not being taken by their kid. I only cheat on my husband and I don't care. Am I the asshole? The only way I'll stay married is if I cheat. Whenever I meet an attractive guy, I go out of my way to seduce him and my husband doesn't stop me. This has been happening for years. I love my husband, but I can't seem to keep my hands to myself. Sometimes I don't even come home and I have no shame. I've even cheated in front of my husband's friends and they hate me for it. They've told my husband that he needs to control me more. Honestly, I think my husband is kind of into it. In fact, he's taken an interest in talking to all of my lovers. One night, my husband caught me making out with one of my boy toys at a friend's party. A few hours later, he was found floating in the pool. And everyone thinks that my husband did it. He does look really guilty, but I don't want to believe it was my husband. After that, I reconnected with an old flame and started another affair. But he's also missing now. I keep calling him, but I get no answer. Come to find out, my husband actually spoke to him before he went missing. What should I do? Guess what? I'm actually telling you the story of a new movie. Find out what happens next and stream Deepwater on Hulu and guess who is in it. If you're a fan of Jacob, you gotta run a Hulu now. Bye! My boyfriend took me on what I thought was a holiday to meet his other girlfriend. I've been with my boyfriend for three months and he mentioned open relationships in the past and I said to him that if he met someone else, I would end the relationship. He was really excited when he planned a trip to Bulgaria. I honestly thought that maybe he was going to propose to me since we've been talking about having kids and such. He told me on the plane that he has a pregnant partner with three kids who he's been with for 10 years and we're going to meet them. Of course I panicked at this point. I had never knew this entire time that we were dating. Then he drops this on me. I asked him if he's still with this woman, he says yes. And then he says we're going to be sleeping at her home. He'll be sleeping with her the whole time that they're there. He wants us all to be together. Of course I beg him to book me a hotel since I'm broke and have no money. I asked him why he didn't tell me any of this and he said he assumed it would be fine since I said I wouldn't like it if he met a new 
new woman, but thought it would be fine since it was someone he's been with and he's still with. He said the choice is mine if I want to accept it or not. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck in Bulgaria for six more days. He asked me if I want to go meet his family tomorrow. And then he told me if I go to the police, he will never talk to me again. Would I be the asshole for still planning to host Thanksgiving dinner while my wife is in the hospital? My wife and I are both in our mid-50s, and we usually host a family dinner for Thanksgiving. We have some friends coming over this year also. We planned a menu, I went down and got everything we needed, and I just took the turkey out of the freezer yesterday morning. A few hours later, she was admitted to the hospital, and is most likely not going to be home by Thursday. So I might have to do all the prep by myself, and all the cooking. I've done this before, of course, but it's much easier with help. Our daughter asked last night if I was still planning to have everyone over, and I said, of course. Now she and her husband both in their late 20s are treating me as if i committed some kind of crime my wife invited two of her friends who don't really have anywhere else to go to celebrate and we don't want them to be alone i also don't want the food to go to waste and i love to eat but we none of this is just exactly casual weekend office. dining my wife is having a fit because i'm considering making dinner instead of spending the day with her at the hospital visiting hours are only from noon to six and they only allow one visitor per day my oldest daughter and her husband have offered to help and so is my wife's son so would i be the asshole with all these conflicting opinions on it Am I the asshole for saying I won't kid swap over our Christmas holiday? I, 32 female, have a brother, Charles, 38 male, who has a girlfriend, Claire, 35 female. Claire has a daughter, Ruby, 8 female, who has additional needs. This will be relevant. And I have a daughter, Bea, 4. We are all, along with mine and Charles' parents, going to be on a family holiday over Christmas. Claire was originally not bringing Ruby as she was meant to be staying with her father, but her dad is a flake and canceled, so Claire is now bringing her. Mm. For some context, Claire loves my daughter, which is great. She will volunteer to babysit her. I don't need a babysitter as I'm a stay-at-home mom and my mother is nearby for emergencies, unprompted, and whenever we see her at events, she'll always want to play with Bea. Bea loves her and it's nice to see, but it's noticeable how she will spend a whole afternoon fussing over Bea, even when me and my husband are perfectly capable of looking after her. But again, she's great with Bea, so we don't mind. A couple of days ago, Claire and I were texting about what to pack for the trip as I was lending her some clothes. During this, I sent her a picture of what I was packing for Bea to give her some idea of what Ruby would need. And Claire said that she was really looking forward to seeing Bea. She then suggested for a couple of days during the holiday, we could do a kid swap where we babysit each other's kids for the day. I was immediately not keen on this idea as I had only met Ruby twice and I know nothing about her needs or how to properly look after her. I came on holiday to spend time with my child, not farm her out to other people. I skirted around the issue saying we could definitely do things together, but Claire kept pushing me to agree. She wanted her and Charles to take Bea to a day for a day to go ice skating. This back and forth went on for a while before I finally said, no, I'm not letting you borrow my child. You already have one. Claire said that I was being unfair and that she deserves a break and to have an enjoyable holiday too. She then said she didn't want to borrow my clothes anyway and stopped texting me. Charles is now saying that she was very hurt that I won't let her take Bea out and that Claire adores her. I said that's not the point and I'm not comfortable caring for Ruby on my own and frankly I find it a bit odd that Claire's idea of a break from parenting involves babysitting. Charles says I'm massively over dramatizing and that babysitting Ruby for a few hours doesn't need a degree and I should just help Claire out. Now I'm wondering if he's right. Am I the asshole? I accidentally made a comment about my girlfriend's weight and I don't know how to fix it. So here's the backstory. My male 21 girlfriend, female 19, and I have been together for two years. When we started dating, she was a gym rat. We constantly worked out together to keep ourselves in good shape. My girlfriend also had a son when she was 15 from another guy who never bothered to be around for her or the baby. She had to lose a lot for her baby. She was kicked out and worked two part-time jobs on top of school to pay for herself and the baby. However, he was diagnosed with leukemia a few months into the relationship and passed away five months ago after chemo failed. This hit my girlfriend hard. She got in contact with her parents who offered for her to move back in and not work so that she could deal with her grief. Instead, she moved in with me and I currently support her financially. Since his passing, she's gained over 65 pounds and is no longer in the shape that she was when we first started dating. She has gotten back to normal in some aspects, such as being able to enjoy doing things and has been more again. Well, recently, I went to a party and ended up cheating on her. It was nothing past...
and it was just because of how much her body reminded me of my old girlfriend. Turned out, a few of her friends were at the party and ended up taking pictures of us making out and then leaving together. So, when I came home the next morning, my girlfriend was obviously pissed. She was yelling and crying to me about how she trusted me and how she couldn't handle this after losing her baby. I didn't really think much of it. She's been erratic in her emotions since the loss, so I was letting her take her time to process it. She just wouldn't stop, though. It was over a half hour before I snapped back and said, quote, if you didn't get so big, then I wouldn't have to. I immediately apologized and tried to explain that I didn't mean it that way. She didn't listen and locked herself in the bedroom for the rest of the day. She wouldn't even let me in when it was time for bed, so I slept on the couch. The next day, we talked it out and we decided to try to deal with this going forward. However, she hasn't been the same. She refuses to have with me and the one time that we did, she made the lights be off and didn't let me touch her. She hasn't been cooking meals and has only been getting food for me. She has canceled all dinner plans that I've made with our friends or told me to go alone. She hasn't been wearing the bright outfits that she usually wears and only wears black sweatpants with a sweatshirt. She doesn't let me cuddle her anymore and she keeps a pillow in between us as she needs it to, quote, align her back at night, even though she faces the other way. We used to shower every morning together and she hasn't done that either. She's been showering when I'm at work or locks both the bedroom and bathroom door. She barely talks to me or even looks at me. I've tried holding her hand and she pulled it away. Everything that I try to do with her, she just ignores me. I'm just so done with her acting so distant and cold to me. I want to be able to go back to the relationship we had before she lost her son or even before she started acting distant to me. My one friend has two kids of her own and said that I am at fault for doing that less than six months after she lost her baby. Also went off on me about how I should have never commented on her weight and that a lot of people would turn to food as a comfort. My girlfriend was diagnosed with binge eating disorder when she was 13. She went to treatment and that's when she became a health nut and said that I will never understand how she currently feels. But we both agreed that we wanted to have more kids. This conversation took place after he passed. So I feel like that should have given her some closure towards his death. I feel like if she's acting this way, then our relationship isn't going to last much longer. I know that her dad told her recently that she is still welcome to move back home and even offered to pay for her grief counseling that she goes to three times a week. I don't know how long I can put up with her having this much attitude. I'm worried that I'm going to make the same mistake if she doesn't take care of my needs soon. I just need to get her back to who she was before. What can I do to help her get over this? Is there anything I can say to make this better? Yeah, you can fucking choke on my d bro. That's what you can do. <laughs> do that and then go eat a big pile of fucking shit. Like, that's what you should do. I'm gonna talk to the girl. She needs to leave him immediately. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Expeditiously. The fact that he makes the death of her son about him. Yeah. Bro, nice. fuck you. Like, we have a follower submission form. This one is, will I be the astronaut for telling stepmom to back off? Story. I have been hesitant about submitting this story because I feel like I might just be the asshole and overreacting, but I love your input in stories and would love to hear what you have to say, so here it goes. Would I be the astronaut for telling my child's stepmom to back off and let me parent when I am present? Backstory. For the past several years, my ex and I and step-parents would attend appointments, parent-teacher conferences, activities, etc. for my child together. Anytime we do, my husband takes a step back and allows my ex to be a dad in these moments and to be the one to talk, ask questions, parent our child, and do what dads do. Stepmom does not do the same. She talks over me to answer questions or give input on situations and even interfered when I was scheduling an appointment to schedule it herself for a different day. One time, my child had to be given a vaccine and was upset and afraid. I started talking to my child when, what do you know, stepmom calls my child over to her so she could talk to her instead. I was on a phone call with my child when we were saying goodbye and my child became upset and didn't want me to hang up the phone. Next thing I know, stepmom could be heard in the background telling my child to hang up the phone and go snuggle with her. After that phone call, I emailed my ex to tell him I did not appreciate what happened and I don't want it happening again, in much nicer terms to keep tension low. He tells me he is sorry that I didn't like what happened, but next time I need to hurry to wrap up the phone so they don't have to interfere. There's a, there's a sign. My ex and stepmom also told my child to call me by my first name rather than mom. Okay, there's another one. I immediately shut that down and told them that was unacceptable. When that happened, they decided that it was disrespectful for my child to call stepmom by her first name also. My ex frequently tells me that stepmom should be allowed every right I have because she is our child stepmom and it's no big deal. I'm gonna run out of red flags tonight. 
Stepmom also gets upset when I volunteer in my child's classroom because it doesn't allow her to do so. I've been picking my battles the last few years because there has been a lot of tension and arguments between my ex and I, and I don't want it affecting my child. I bite my tongue on things to avoid adding more arguments. However, I think I may have been too passive and allowed things to go too far. So my question is, would I be the astronaut to tell stepmom that when we are together at events, she needs to take a back seat and allow me to be mom and stop interrupting me or interfering with my scheduling appointments or parenting my child? Candy Thunder left us some notes. Felt strongly enough about it to leave her thoughts here. Candy Thunder's notes. If there's one place that you have to grow a backbone and stand up for yourself, it is as your kid's mother. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to stand up for your kids. As a stepmom, I would never step on a mother's toes in that way. It is simply not my place. I am sorry you are going through this, but I think you need to make doctor's appointments, parent-teacher conferences, etc. Just you and your child's dad. Do not include bonus parents. As a parent-slash-guardian, you have the right to decide who is invited into the room. Which leads to a whole other discussion here. If, and this is a big if, but if you create a boundary... If you draw a line in the sand and you say, this shall not be passed, this is how it will be moving forward. I'm making an assumption here that the parenting plan for your child is between you and your ex, not you and your ex and stepmom. You can get legal here if you need to. So when you create these boundaries, if they're not respected, there may be some kind of legal recourse in here because stepmom has no legal role as a parent or guardian to your child i think i'm not a lawyer i'm not giving legal advice however i do think that if you try to create this boundary and it is met with resistance that you may be able to consult with an attorney and have some reinforcement there it is depending on how long this has been going on i i understand the sentiment that you think you may have been too passive over time and yes you probably have uh, because they think this is okay. And even when you did speak up about it, they're like, I'm sorry you didn't like that, but next time um, do things different so you don't have to deal with that. No, that is not the solution here at all. She's clearly stepped on your toes. She's clearly gone too far. She's clearly made your child uncomfortable. The ship needs to be righted here. And if dad isn't willing to get on board and do that, you can pull in reinforcements as you need to. It depends on the agreement, but you're in a situation here where one parent is giving into a system that does not allow frequent and meaningful contact with another parent. It seeks to destroy that. And if anything else, this could be grounds for a, for a change in custody, for a change in the parenting plan. I mean, it could be that serious. You could have that to threaten if this system is not followed. It's horseshit what she's trying to do. It is malicious. This is not an accident. This is not her just wanting to be a good parent to your kid. This is this, that's not what this is. This is a competition for her. This is completely selfishly driven for her. And this has not come from a good place. And you have to do something about it. Otherwise, given the current trajectory, she's going to continue driving, driving, and driving, and driving a wedge in between you and your child. And if you don't speak up at some point, you're going to be like, damn, it's too late. We don't like that you call mom. Oh, your mom's still on the phone. Hang up that phone and come cuddle with me, sweetie. Just rubbing it in your face the whole time. Garbage. This is a follower submission again, so OP, God, the internal struggle that you've been dealing with this whole time is, this is poison. You know what I mean? Like, th like this has been a poison that's building inside of you to this point, and you, you have to get that poison out. You have to, because this is going to drive you insane, and it's going to cause all kinds of other problems. You have to put a stop to it. You're slowly just getting poisoned over time by drinking little bits of it, but you got to stop. It's unfortunate when you when you find yourself in those kind of situations. I mean, if for no other reason than the the health and welfare of the children, you know, about doctor's visits, school problems. If for no other reason, you got to be able to communicate about those kind of things. You don't have to be friends. You don't have to be besties. You don't have to even like each other. But you have to be able to civilly communicate about your kids. I mean, there's got to be confusion with the kid here because at dad's, the kid is is being told not to call mom mom, but to call stepmom mom. There's, if nothing else, confusion and an altering of the perceived relationship with mom and with dad. I'm sure you can get through and parent um, in a in a, a blended family without having 
that civil communication if you have to, but it is so much easier when it's there. When everybody can act like a grown up, it is so much easier. This is completely selfishly motivated. It is not her trying to do the right thing for the kid. It is her wanting the fulfillment of, of all the positive things that come along with being mom. When it comes to having to deal with all the negative or difficult things that come along with being a mom, I bet she's not so quick to want the title. I'll tell you that for free. They could be grooming her for a grab for soul custody and trying to plant the seeds for it. And then by that point, whenever that point is, if they're playing the long game, they're hoping to have established that uh, that the child here, you know, calls stepmom mom anyway, goes to stepmom for comfort, treats her like the mom, and now has detached from bio mom. I could see it. I could see it. I mean, that's maniacal, but I could see it. Dad gets the Ascon one, probably also the Brozo Award here for going along with this shit. I'm sure at her direction and at her insistence, but for allowing this to happen for selfish drivers, not for the best thing for his kid. He's an Ascon one, too. I just found out my husband showed his coworkers and his friends naughty pictures of me. Should I leave him? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. My husband and I have only been married a few months. Before that, we dated for two years. My husband works in a really remote area, so he's not with me most of the time. After we got married, we bought a house near my parents' house since he would be away for most of the time, and that way I could spend time with my family. There are a few things about my husband that really bother me, but for the most part, he is pretty good. He supports me financially while I'm in school to pursue my career. I just got an internship for a magazine, which has been my dream job. My husband and I started dating, everything went really fast. He's really, really passionate. After a year of dating, he proposed, and of course, I said yes. We have a great love life. I mean, great. We have a lot of chemistry together, and we're super attracted to each other. And one thing about my husband is he loves to show me off. He's like the opposite of a jealous husband. He loves when I wear cute, revealing clothes, which is not a bad thing, by the way. And whenever somebody hits on me, he loves it. He's proud to be my husband, and I'm proud to be his wife. But sometimes I feel like he's showing me off a little bit too much. Since he's away for work, he always asks me to send him, you know, naughty pictures. Come to find out, he shows his co-workers. Part two is up. My husband showed his friends and co-workers my naughty pictures. Should I leave him? This claim is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. Here's how I found out he did it. Every single day, multiple times a day, he would ask me to send him naughty pictures. It actually became like a routine for me. I would even order cute lingerie on a weekly basis for this. One day, my husband sent me a message that was clearly for one of his friends. In the message, he said, check out this picture my wife just sent me. And then he proceeded to attach the picture I had just sent him. For the first five seconds, I thought he was joking. You see, I would never have expected him to do that but after about 30 seconds i came to realize he had sent it to me by mistake i called him and he instantly turned off his phone i called him about 10 more times but it all went to voicemail finally three hours later he sends me a text message apologizing he said that he had never showed his friends the pictures and that he promises to never do it again and that this time the picture was too good to not share and it gets worse he told me his co-workers are always drooling over my instagram pictures so he just felt like sharing he sent a whole other message talking about how sexy and beautiful i am and guess what he asked for another freaking picture. Part three is up. My husband showed his friends and co-workers naughty pictures of me. Should I leave him? Disclaimer, it's not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. After he apologized, he basically asked me for more pictures. So I decided to ghost him for a week. After a week, he shows up to our house. When I opened the door, he started begging for forgiveness. He told me that he couldn't live without me, that he thought I was so beautiful, he just wanted to share my pictures. I explained to him that what he did was a total violation of my trust and of my body. The thought of his co-workers and friends being able to see those pictures literally nauseated me. And of course, I was totally ashamed that my family and friends would find out. I mean, what if one of his friends told his wife and then she told me something? He told me he'd never do it again and I accepted his apology. After that, we did the dirty and it was amazing. He had to go to work the very next day. And a few days later, he started asking me for more pictures. I have to trust the fact that he said he would never show those pictures to anybody again. So I started sending him pictures again. Only now it just doesn't feel the same. Before it was fun and I wanted to send him the pictures. Now I do it praying that he won't show it to anybody else. I've also come to realize that my husband knows how to manipulate me really well. Poor sexy times are so good that he just gets me to do whatever he wants. Like taking those pictures. I really don't know if I should trust him, but at the same time, he's my husband. I feel like you guys will have good advice. What should I do? I'm the asshole for buying myself expensive clothes when my family struggles to make ends meet. I'm 18 and I recently started my first full-time job. I still live at home and pay $300 for rent. And I pay for all my other necessities by myself. 
phone bill, hygiene products, etc. My family has been poor my whole life. As my mom, who's 44, is a single mom who is studying full time and looking after five kids. I have a slight shopping addiction, and at least once a week, some sort of package or food shows up at our doorstep. Today, a new pair of jeans, they were about $150, arrived, as I was in a need of a desperate new pair since I outgrown my old ones. And my mom blew up at me. She called me selfish and insensitive, and that she's ashamed that I am her daughter, telling me that I should think about how it makes her feel when I buy an excessive amount of clothes when she can barely afford the heat the house in the winter. So am I the a-hole for not offering to pay more rent or help with my family of six bills? Or is she insane for asking me to stop spending my hard-earned money on things that I want? Am I the asshole for asking my fiance to not wear his brother's necklace on our wedding day? Note, me and my fiance get along really well with everything else, but we've just had a disagreement with this. He wears his late brother's ring on his right hand and his brother's necklace. I can get behind the ring because you don't really notice it as much, but the necklace is more noticeable. It has his brother's, brother's wife, and their daughter's initials engraved on it. I asked him if he'd take off the necklace just for our wedding day. I also have a necklace I got as a gift from my mom that I'm not wearing on the day because it doesn't go with my dress. It's just one day and he can wear the ring if he wants. My fiance refused and said it's his brother's and he's going to wear it. Am I the asshole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the brother passed away. He's not going to be there. Maybe that's his way of honoring his brother every day by wearing it. And then mm -hmm. why would he not want to honor him at the wedding? It's literally a fucking necklace. He can wear it under. Like, I'm like, you can tuck it in. Unless he like demands it's on top of everything, I guess. But even then, I don't think it's that big of a deal that he wants to wear it. I think it's crazy. OP has like since deleted basically all of their posts. Like they oh. really condensed it down. Okay. It's kind of interesting. There's a bunch of comments too. And like it doesn't get better. Like it, there's more? to the story yeah it absolutely does not get better so someone comments and they go you're the asshole this obviously <laughs> means a great deal to him and they can't be there in person mm -hmm. it was okay to ask him but he said no leave it alone you're focusing more on image and aesthetics than the true meaning of it and why he wears it yeah why does it bother you so much that his sister-in-law and daughter's initials are engraved on it for your wedding and so opie goes if it was just his brother i'd kind of get it but it's also the brother's wife and their kids initials on it so essentially he'd be wearing a whole other's family's name <laughs> on our wedding day it's not like an ex-girlfriend's name or you know what i mean like it's so that would piss me off i'd be like yeah like we're not even getting married take off the necklace that's a little weird yeah but if it like his brother wore it i don't think that's weird i think she's weird so someone asks and goes info why didn't this necklace go to his brother's wife or kid mm. op goes they've also passed wait what <laughs> Wait, and she doesn't want him wearing it. All of the kids passed too. Did they like all die together? Uh, one would assume they all died in a tragic accident yeah. together. Like three people taken out like that. What? Maybe he wants to honor all of them. I just got full body chills. That makes me so annoyed. Why would you get <laughs> mad about that? Honestly, I hope he calls off the wedding. Yeah. I hope he calls off the wedding. This person why is would you evil. Call, why would you respond? Honestly, they're all dead. <laughs> Why even, I wouldn't even admit that. I'd be like, I don't know. He's weird. Like, I would lie. I'm not going to be that honest. That's crazy. <laughs> to write that out and be like, send. That's the thing. Like, you wrote this, yeah. bitch. Like, you, you didn't realize that maybe it's a what way What you're saying is awful. <laughs> My 28 female boyfriend, 32 male, said he would be attracted to a 14 year old. Okay. All right. Let's. Am I the asshole? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We've been together for two months. We were talking about how attraction works for us. I'm demisexual, and I need to feel a connection slash have feeling for someone to be attracted to him. But I have a high libido, so all my relationships were great from his point of view. My boyfriend had a promiscuous past, but he was always been faithful to his girlfriends when he was in a serious relationship. He said, however, that he can still feel attraction for other women, uh, even if he is in a relationship, which is fine. Fair. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. But then he said, if I see a woman, I could subconsciously tell if I would do something with her and rank her from one to ten. Well, okay. All right. Now you're getting a little weird. <laughs> now you're getting a little creepy. It's just spontaneous and involuntary with any woman between the ages of 14 to 45. <laughs> This motherfucker's got an Excel spreadsheet in his mind <laughs> for 14 of every to 45. human person he's ever seen. You know, you're four years early on the marketing demographics. If you want it, usually it's 18 to 49. You didn't need to lower both of them to 14 and 45. You didn't need to do that. Nielsen has a rating system you can use. You don't have to. You don't have to be like too old to wait. <laughs> 
<laughs> Get out of here. What the fuck? I was I was taken aback. Yeah, wrong. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Come on. I thought he meant that if you see someone randomly on the street, you might think that she's 18 to 20 or older, but she might be just 14. That I get, because sometimes you do. Sometimes, yeah. I remember one of the things you learn in food service is that uh, some people that are like, you know, 20 or like 18 to 20 can still look like they're 21, or even as young as like 15, 16. Or you can see someone who looks young and they're actually older. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. But it works both ways. Sometimes You don't know. You don't yeah. know someone's age until you ask them. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I asked, but if you knew that a girl was 14, that she was underage, even if you didn't act on it, would you still be attracted to her? He said yes. <laughs> if she doesn't look like out in a kid- the open, fucking Batman couldn't get out of you, <laughs> etc., etc. Why would ever say this to someone? I don't know. I don't know why. Do it's like oh, finally I'm with my people. I can. I can. Also, they've been together for two months. He's yeah, really just a, saying. Just, it. Yeah, that's a little. That's a little early to come out as a you know, fuck. as a hebophile. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. said yes if she doesn't look like a kid, but like a young adult, because he can't control biology, and it's the same as finding someone attractive, even if they are an awful person and you wouldn't even talk to them. How could I navigate and discuss this with him if it's worth any discussion? Um, you leave. I think you should leave. My boyfriend wants to break up with me because of my lack of breasts. Oh. Some weeks ago, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. It's not too late, but it could have been diagnosed earlier. Still, radiation and chemotherapy, it's needed, and we're worried about her. When she got diagnosed, in tears, she finally told something I didn't know. My grandma died because of breast cancer. Almost at the same time, my aunt did. I have five aunts, and all of them checked themselves. Two of them even found some early bumps without much struggle they got rid of. The other still needed to check every couple of months. She told me this so I can get checked immediately. I was pissed at her. She decided not to tell me that cancer is something that apparently runs through our family and waited just because she's the one suffering it right now. She said she was in negation and that she never thought it would happen to her since she got checked only once and everything seemed normal. I got checked and yes, I have a high risk of getting breast cancer. One of my cousins also had a very high risk of breast cancer. So she decided to extirp her breast and deal with the problem right away. I talked talked with her and that's how I ended up deciding to also take my breast off for my own health. My mom surprisingly was very acceptive of my decision and we both agreed with the pros and cons of the surgery. Here's when my boyfriend enters the scene. He was with me the whole process of my stress from my mom's diagnosed to my own and he was with me all the time reassuring me that he's with me and he's on my side so no matter what I want to do but getting a double mastectomy wasn't part of the deal I guess. When I told him to say goodbye to my boobs because they're going to leave eventually, his face dropped. Really? Was the first thing he said. I explained to him everything. How my cousin also got a mastectomy and how it's not 100% sure that I'm going to be cancer free. But it's the best option for me and the one I decided to pick. He said, oh, cool, I guess. Mm. Wrong answer. Very much wrong not the right answer. answer. He seemed in shock and tried to play it off, but I could feel the shift on his attitude and eventually I felt so uncomfortable I had to leave his house. Oh. This morning, I woke up with some screenshots one common friend we have sent me and said he cannot hide this from me knowing how in the wrong my boyfriend is in. My boyfriend basically said that he looked up aftermath photos of mastectomies and he's grossed out by the scars and how weird and masculine my chest is going to look like after it. He said that he loves me and my body but he's a tits guy and the fact that his... (laughs) perfect girl is now going to lose the best part of her is a big Mm. turn off for him. What the f*** dude? Because you know all we are are breasts. After explaining his stupid reasoning, he also asked my friend on how to bring this up to me without looking like a jerk. You're losing battle here. Exactly. But my friend called him out and told him that there's absolutely no way to explain his reasoning without looking like a dumbass. And my boyfriend decided to suck it up and just not to bring it up to me ever. And that eventually he's going to find an excuse to break up with me without making it obvious. I'm devastated. My life is literally in danger and his biggest worry is that he's not going to be able to touch my tits again. What? My surgery is in five days. I'm nervous and now I'm depressed because the person who supposedly supported my decisions is planning on how to break up with me because I decided to look up for my health. He's an idiot. A 
acting stupid childish idiot. Yep. But still he managed to twist and add an insecurity that wasn't there. I didn't mind the operation. I couldn't care less not having boobs again. But now all this ideas of scars and blood and the masculinization of my body is taking a toll on me. And I just wanted to vent here. That's all. Thanks for reading if you did. Damn. That's heartbreaking. As sad as it is, it is a part of what society views as a woman is your breasts. And the fact that this person who says he loves her is like, you're not going to have that part anymore. I can't love you. I can't imagine how traumatic it would be that the person who's supposed to love you and support you isn't going to be there anymore. It is awful. My boyfriend saw my bank balance by accident and has now found I have £188,000 <laughs> in savings. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, he wants to split the bill <clears throat> and isn't acting as generous as he was. Man. He sends me his wish list and is acting weird. Should I have told him or is he being weird? How 188,000? 188, that's a lot of bridge, you know. Oh, wait, so does, she, so does she still expect that he, for him to pay for everything at the moment? Is that, the, is that what's happening here, the dynamic? I think, not that, not that um, he would, is paying for everything, mm. but I think, you know now, it's like, he's not as generous mm. as he was. Mm. Like, you know, in some situations where it's like, we'll be like, oh, I've got this. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now you ain't got any more. Yeah. You got it yourself. So it's like, like I said, he wants to split the bill now mm. because he knows that she can she's got the money it. for it.